Imagine the dog days of summer without the dogs. The latest Hollywood blockbuster without a bucket of popcorn. A sunny afternoon at the fair without a sticky mound of candy floss. Not a chance. Behind every one of these snacks lies a finely tuned machine. And a lot of them are made right here. Construction of a candy floss machine starts with the central part called the floss band. Workers use a shear machine to cut sheets of stainless steel into smaller pieces. A computerized cutter punches out vents in the steel. Now the floss band can be rolled into a cylindrical shape. Then a welder spot welds some fine screen onto it. The screen is fragile, so he welds in small spots rather than all the way round. An assembler fits the band inside a spinning container called the head, where the flavoured sugar will go. These are the mechanics behind candy floss. Heating elements in the head melt the sugar. Then centrifugal force hurls the liquid sugar out through tiny holes into a large, wide bowl. As the threads hit the air, they solidify, creating a spider's web of sweetness. If the head spins too slowly, the sugar will melt into a mass of bubbling goo. But if it goes too fast, the flying sugar strands won't have enough time in the air to harden. A couple of stabiliser bolts to keep the base steady. A bowl to catch the sugary threads. And the candy floss machine is complete. More than a century of evolving design and manufacturing improvements. All to bring the airy pleasures of fine spun sugar to kids. And most importantly, their parents. Candy floss may be all the rage at the carnival, but in the baseball stadium, hot dogs rule. American sports fans prefer them to pies or burgers and wolf down some 20 billion of them every year. But it takes a special machine to churn out large numbers of these meaty crowd pleasers. And Creators has that covered too. The average grill rolls the hot dogs on a set of rods to cook them evenly. Spare the rods, spoil the wieners. The problem is that over time, a greasy crust collects on the rods. Not exactly what you want your customers to see as they pass by the hot dog stand. Who'd have thought that even the humble hot dog grill needed a makeover? This innovative cooker uses rods too, but to roll the hot dogs over a single easy to clean cooktop. So it's not the rods that do the cooking, but the steel grill underneath. And the grease runs down the inclined surface and away from the dogs as they cook. To make a modern hot dog grill, workers start by feeding sheets of stainless steel into a shearing machine. The steel is both durable and rust resistant. But this foundation needs to breathe so the grill's motor doesn't overheat. A punch press creates a series of vents. A press brake bends the grill's bottom and side lips into place. Then it folds the metal, forming the three sides. Now for the grill. Not only does this inclined grill help to keep the grease flowing away from the hot dogs, it also gives customers a tempting view of the goods. Stainless steel is strong and easy to clean. 
but it doesn't distribute heat well. This aluminium diffuser helps spread the temperature evenly beneath the grill. Finally, the heart of the machine. Once the rollers are in place, this hot dog grill is ready to take on a hungry crowd. The average baseball fan eats 60 hot dogs a year. With the inclined grill, they turn out juicy, warm and grease-free, whether they're cooked within the first inning or the ninth. Another of the world's most popular snack foods is that explosive little grain called popcorn. Popcorn is always associated with cinemas, who charge you vast amounts to annoy your fellow filmgoers with it. The burning question for them is how to keep large quantities of popcorn warm and crisp. Soggy, stale popcorn doesn't taste good. It also shrinks in volume, meaning profits shrink as well. So, in addition to its hot dog grills and candy floss makers, Cretas and Company also make popcorn machines. In fact, Charles Cretas invented the modern popcorn machine in 1885. Putting together one of these poppers starts with the heart of the machine, the enclosed stainless steel kettle, or pot. This is where the corn pops. The kernels cook in oil for about three and a half minutes at up to 230 degrees. But it can't be just any kernels. Only certain varieties of specially cultivated corn will pop. As the moisture in each kernel is heated past its boiling point, it turns into steam and the internal pressure builds. When the pressure inside is high enough, the hard outer shell explodes. The result is popcorn. The key is keeping the temperature high enough to pop the corn, but not so high that it burns, a smell most of us know all too well. The centre of the pot is where the heat is most concentrated. So four metal pieces called agitator legs rotate and push the kernels closer to the centre so the kernel cooks efficiently. The kettle's heating elements are covered by a retainer. They slice a notch in the side so a rod or shaft can be inserted that will later attach the kettles to the cabinet. A plasma cutter disintegrates the unwanted metal on the retainer. Plasma is an ionised gas that melts the metal and then blows it away in a shower of sparks. The pot's done and the bottom case gets legs plus a drawer to catch any unpopped pieces of corn. Once the corn has been popped, it's all about keeping it warm and delicious. So workers install a device that, in a stroke of linguistic genius, they call the conditioner. The conditioner forces hot air through the popcorn to keep it dry and crisp. All that's needed now are glass sides and plastic doors. And another contraption is ready to deliver another classic snack.